Yo viewers, I'm Dark Peace, the creator of Dojardin, a RPG bullet hell where you influence minds instead of using violence. And big news, a playable demo is out! You can play it right now on my Discord server, link in the description. And in this video, I'm gonna try to make a Godot plugin in 24 hours, or else I'm not gonna have the time to study for my college exams. I have a lot of big ideas to improve the tilemap system in Godot. The first tool is a pattern tool. So imagine you want to do something like that, something like a, a checkboard, one tile out of two. Um, normally you would have to place each tile, even with lines and it can be very long so here with the pattern tool you have a space to write some patterns here is a simple pattern one zero zero one the numbers correspond to the tile ids and they are separated by a semicolon and a back backspace you can have multiple patterns, as many as you want, and they can have any size. Um, each pattern is separated by uh, an empty line. And so here, you're gonna choose a pattern, so minus one is no pattern, zero is the first. You're just gonna draw with that, and automatically, it's gonna place tiles according to the pattern. It works with also lines, surfaces, and with the bucket tool. So you can draw with just one tile at a time, or you can also use this tool to draw with the whole pattern. So it's gonna place just like that. Now imagine you have already some tiles placed and you want to use uh, your pattern. You have the replacing option and when you're gonna draw, it's gonna replace the tiles you already have. Or you can uh, deactivate it and it's not gonna replace. There's also the origin of the pattern. So by default, it's zero, zero. So when you draw, it's gonna start the pattern at zero, zero. Or you can also start the pattern when where your mouse is. The pattern always starts where your mouse is. You can also use minus one as an ID. It's gonna act like uh, an eraser. So all the tiles with minus one as an ID uh, will get replaced by uh, an empty space. You can also use space. And what's different from minus one is that space are just considered empty space. It's not gonna change an existing tile. It's just gonna ignore this tile. So if you want to use it to draw more complex shapes, like uh, this pattern, tiles that are here are just gonna be ignored. You can also use randomization. If you write R, it's gonna, it's gonna place a random tile. Now after the R, you're gonna have to write the ID of a pattern, for example, this one. So R1 is gonna take a tile from pattern 1 and it's gonna place it randomly. One more thing you can do, if you don't want to write a pattern, you can just draw one within the limits and you can click on turn into pattern and it's gonna print the pattern. You can just copy paste. The second tool is circle and spray. So drawing a circle in Godot is hard. <laughs> I mean, you have to draw in manually, um, which is long. But with this tool, it's gonna be way easier. You just write the size and boom, here it is. So it works with any size. You can do a filled circle or not. If it's not a filled circle, you can increase the outline white to make uh, donuts. And there is also a spray tool. 
which is gonna spawn tiles at random with a certain radius, the size. So here is gonna spawn five tiles. You can increase the density and it's, uh, it can be cool for randomization if you have uh, tiles uh, with plants, uh, grass for example and you want to fill up a plane it's very useful you don't have to place them all manually it can just spawn uh, randomly of course it also works with the pattern tool and you can also write floats The third tool is a replacing tool. If you want to replace every tile of a certain ID by another one, you can just place here the tile you want to replace, here zero, the tile you want it uh, replaced by, one, and you press uh, global replacing and up. You can also use uh, the Y option as random pattern. So instead of replacing all of these tiles by uh, the tile number one, it's gonna replace it by the pattern number one. You can also replace within certain limits. For example, I write the first tile, it's gonna be zero, zero. Then I check the, uh, I check the end tile. For example, 21, 11. It's gonna display the area within which you're gonna replace and then up replace. The next tool is the multi cursor. With that you're gonna be able to draw at multiple points, like if you had multiple cursors. So I'm just gonna activate it. Here you're gonna write the offset, for example 0, 5. Uh, that means when I'm gonna draw it's gonna also draw with an offset of 0 and 5. You can have as many cursors. And the last tool is a time map children. It's like multiple cursors, but with multiple tile maps. The tiles you're gonna draw with this tile map are actually gonna be placed on this tile map. If I set the, the ID to 1, I'm gonna draw. And if I try to erase, I can't, because it's actually on this time map. Well, I created it to solve a problem in my game, which is a 2D top-down RPG. I'm gonna make a video about it um, later. But basically, if you need multiple tile maps with the same um, tile sets, uh, for example, create artificial height levels in a 2D top-down top -down game, you would have to have uh, multiple tile maps, and just by looking at your level, you don't know whether it's on one tile map or another, and this can just help you manage that. You can also draw on multiple tile maps at the same time. You just have to make it the same name as the parent tile map, and then a uh, number. Here, both have one, so if you have one, it's gonna draw on both, but if you don't have one, I'm just gonna draw on the first one. There's also an option to draw at the same time on the current time map, the parent one. Yeah, and it works also for the eraser tool, so if you just draw on both time maps, but you want to erase, here it's gonna erase also on self.